Today, I'm going to chat with you about money and value. Ooh. I'm going to tell you the truth. There are only two things I think that are harder for me to talk about than money in particular. That would be, no, not sex, not politics. Well, you know I don't have a problem chatting about politics and not religion. You probably also know if you've watched uh, prior videos that I, I don't really have a difficult time chatting about religion, but I have a really difficult time chatting about money. The only two things that are as difficult for me to chat about is money would include death and illness. These are really difficult topics for me because I'm not convinced of an afterlife and I love this life and I don't want to leave it. In fact, one of my aspirations is to live for as long as possible, whatever that possibility might be. Uh, I try to be as healthy as I can in the spirit of moving towards that. But you just never know in this life, do you? And I think that's, uh, that's what makes it so hard to think about death is an illness is, I mean, at the the snap of a finger, you just don't know what could happen. Whether it's some kind of um, emergency, like natural disaster kind of thing, or some awful disease. And these things, uh, even with antidepressants, <laughs> even with my effexor, that's a conversation uh, I'm not fond of having because it scares me and because it's unpleasant and because it deeply saddens me and it's therefore not easy for me to talk about. Similarly, money is actually really difficult for me to talk about because I'm not good at money. I don't make so much of it just yet and I do have uh, battles with self-esteem on occasion as I wrap my mind around the challenges with making money. And part of it is this. I think it would be easy enough to try and find some satisfying uh, salary that doesn't necessarily accompany a job that I find satisfying, a job. And that's been one of the struggles in my life, uh, specifically too, because I've always been more of an artistic type person. And that can make it all the more challenging with respect to accumulating finances. As I have told you in the past, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a movie star. So I had a dream to make a lot of money, or I had a dream and envisioned myself making a lot of money uh, as a, you know, somebody like John Travolta, who, who can make $20 million in a movie and make up to three movies a year, right? So that's up to $60 million a year. I had that kind of fantasy as a kid. So I've always fantasized about making a lot of money. And even when I wanted to be a poet in my teens, through various periods in my 20s, and even a few times throughout my 30s, it was always this hope that it could generate an income at least significant enough that I could live comfortably and not have to work a job that I didn't want to work. That's a whole conversation, isn't it? This, this idea of what it means to have a job and uh, to like your job, to love your job, to do something that you love and to be able to commit yourself to that and only that with respect to occupation. And it depends on the field you're in. I do envy people in medicine because it seems that there's just such a high demand these days for people in that field. Uh, in the arts, it's mad competitive. I applied to creative writing schools and 
only got into one and it didn't offer me any money. So it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, th that was my, that was the plan I had for how I might continue to devote myself to making art, you know, creative writing, if you will. It was by getting a uh, graduate assistantship or a teaching assistantship and having my tuition paid. But uh, yeah, that didn't happen and fine because it actually led me to doing this video blogging, which I enjoy. Uh, I, I enjoy this more than I enjoy just about anything. I think um, free talking, if you will, just free talking is like the most fascinating thing in the world to share thoughts as they come. No revision allowed. Only looking back and saying, oh, I didn't mean that, I meant that. And to be right up front with your thoughts, that to me is how you move the world forward in creating greater understanding of what it means to be ourselves and you and I and to create better community. That is my theory. Uh, it's, it's what I wrote in my statement of purpose to various creative writing schools that I applied to. The whole point that I got into creative writing was because I just really wanted to share my thoughts and I thought that was going to be the right way to do it. But it turns out this way is much more gratifying because uh, for one thing I don't have to go into 20 plus thousand dollars of debt to do this. I can just do it. Um, also to me there is something about and I've talked to you about this before, but there is something about it being on record and it being on video. To me, it makes it more tangible and visceral, etc. Uh, but I want to move back and t talk about the money thing, too. <sighs> I've had some conversations with a really awesome philosopher and writer, Matthew Snope. We were talking a lot about how one of the problems with a capitalist society it, and one of the frustrations is that it can sort of pressure you inadvertently perhaps into viewing yourself in a lens of how much money you make or don't make and does that provide you with your sense of how you value yourself and you could ask as we look at who makes how much money, does that reflect accurately how much you know we say they're worth in comparison to us? I tell you, one of the most frustrating aspects of the whole President Trump scenario for me is the fact that he's a pathological liar and a criminal and yet he, in theory, may have billions of dollars to his name. That infuriates me because I know so many people who work towards having a good character and are more worthy of that kind of money and don't get it and live in the uh, pits of poverty. Money is really hard for me to talk about because I just think it's really, I think it touches on a lot of insecurities and sensitivities because it has to do not just with value. In fact, I'm not sure if we think as much about the value aspect of money as we could. I think it has a lot more to do also with power and resources. I mean, if you have a lot more money, you have a lot more access to certain things, don't you? And it can become very easy to envy that, can't it? I know I look at people on my Facebook stream and I'll sometimes think, wow, that person looks like they have a lot more money than I do. And they look more rested than I feel and it looks like they can do more with their videos than I can do. And that insecurity and that self-esteem grappling, that becomes a thing. And 
uh, it is a difficult emotional experience. Of course, being in, in this situation where, well, let's, let's first of all, you're going to want some transparency from me. I work as a tutor and I make $12 an hour, so it's much better than what I was doing uh, in the grocery store days when I was making as little as, you know, seven fifty to eight dollars an hour when the minimum wage moved eight dollars an hour. Uh, that was pretty awful. And of course, there is a lot of context involved in all of this, isn't there? A lot of context. It's, it's never so simple as this is how m much money you make and some of it has to do with being at the right place at the right time, but not all of it. It is my fault to a tremendous degree that I've ended up making as little money as I make today. I take responsibility for that too, which is one reason why uh, I have held back in fact, on having this conversation, I feel a lot of guilt and shame and regret. For example, uh, dropping out of college in my youth. If I had stuck with the college thing, and if I'd had a positive attitude, I probably could have established some really good relationships and probably could have made myself more attractive to those interested in investing in the humanities kinds of projects such as this uh, much earlier on in life, but I didn't do that. And it is what it is. I accept responsibility for that. I don't, um, I don't blame anyone or anything. I mean, you could blame fate, but it doesn't, doesn't change anything. It is what it is. I could sit there and say, well, I suffered from mad anxiety and if only I didn't, but maybe to a degree that's so. I mean, anxiety messed me up in a lot of ways before I was um, fortunate enough to have access to uh, Effexor, which has completely revolutionized the way I can conduct myself day to day, actually, uh, without having panic attack after panic attack. But um, even then, I think it's not healthy to blame external forces for the situations we're in. Nor do I think it's, it's appropriate for us to hate ourselves also. I think that's not constructive. And so I think as I am grappling w with my financial desires and my financial scenario, the best thing I can do is really just be upfront about it. And uh, that's, I mean, that's another reason why I like doing this video blog. I like being upfront about the things that matter to me. That's why I talked about moving. It was just uh, moving someplace better. I mean, it was a scenario I was faced with that interests me. It's a life. That's why this work is autobiographical. I like grappling with the efforts we are making towards living a better life. So I am grappling with figuring out how to make more money. It is, that is a fact, and it is hard for me to talk to you about it because I don't want to be that guy who's asking for money. I don't want to be that guy who's obsessed with money. I don't want to be that guy who is like a parasite either. On the other hand, as I explore things like Patreon and these other crowdsourcing websites, I, I'll be upfront with you. I see people getting paid for artistic projects I would never give a penny to because uh, not necessarily even because on a superficial level I find some sort of ethical problem. I just, for example, I saw an independent horror movie uh, getting funded. I don't like horror movies. I, I'm not sure I fully appreciate the purpose behind subjecting oneself to like miserable nightmarish things so that's something I would I would never invest in but you know it occurs to me that if there are people out there who are getting paid for the things that they're getting paid for which are things that I might not not necessarily want to contribute money to then I mean it seems only reasonable that I begin to stand up for this idea of me getting paid for things that maybe people would like to see getting paid 
see, see people as um, income generating options, such as the talking head video blog concept. But it is a fact that asking for someone means it, you are asking them for the resources because that's what money really is at the end of the day. It's a resource. And who wants to part with their resources? Some people do. Not everybody is uptight about money. Some people are very un-uptight about their money. I am sometimes very uptight about my money and I am sometimes not uptight about my money. I have had moments of generosity before. Uh, I have given money to... There was a situation many years ago where I gave money to helping refugees in Syria. That was during my Glenn Beck phase. <laughs> I've changed a lot since then. I donated to... I donated to any political campaigns recently. I donated to the campaign against Chris... Um, my mind is swirling. I get really nervous. Do you see how nervous I get when I talk about money? Like, I can't even think straight. I can't remember things. It makes me so damn nervous. I, And I've got to stop that, though. I've got to stop hating talking about money because there are so many people who are so good at it who naturally therefore attract more of it and why can't I remember that uh, congressman's name Chris Smith he is the congressman one of the representatives in New Jersey I contributed money to the gentleman running against him Josh Welly that was in the I want to say the 4th Legislative District or the 12th, I can't remember. Hard to believe that was a year ago now. Money, 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 money. The whole world, and I think the way we conceptualize money too, and this economy, it's all changing. You see, I can remember a day when you couldn't access so many videos on YouTube for free. I remember when if you wanted video content, you had to go to the Blockbuster and pay at least 250 for a video. One of my concerns is that the actual amount of value we put into video content and artistic things has actually gone down. If you think about how many people blog for basically for free, if you think about how many people produce video content essentially for free versus how many people did 20 years ago you wonder are we putting less uh, are we putting our money where our mouth is less are we giving less appreciation to those kinds of things on the other hand on the other hand now virtually anyone has access to the products give them the means to produce video content and the world is your oyster when it comes to how you can figure out ways to monetize that. Isn't that the case? So there is always the other way of examining this. Now, there is, uh, there is a kind of self-criticism to be had with respect to my circumstances, because you could say, you know, with a bachelor's degree in liberal studies, you know, why don't you just apply for a job? Well, first of all, I do. I apply to jobs all the time. Um, that doesn't appear to have been a success as of yet. Um, fine. But the truth is, I don't want those jobs. The truth is, I want to do this full time. I really do. And I've felt guilty about that for a long time, but I don't anymore. I mean, there are artists who make a lot of money off their paintings, and their paintings aren't necessarily good, and they're able to devote their lives to that full time. There are people who write songs that I think never even scratch the surface of really any kind of aesthetic value that I could relate to anyway, and those people 
are millionaires. So, you know, why shouldn't I stand up for my opportunity to stand up for my values and be able to do that full time? I think that's an important conversation to have. That's an important sort of like inner monologue for me to grapple with. And it's hard for you to talk about it because it makes me feel, oh, I don't know. First of all, it makes me feel weak and vulnerable. Many of you are perhaps watching this who are economically successful and, and you are or you're not of the artistic type. I don't know. I don't know who you are. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard not to conceptualize a sense of yourself through the money that you do or don't have. Uh, but you have to stand up for your values. That you must do. And it's interesting because I was driving home from the community college the other day. And I, usually I listen to the audiobook, whatever audiobook I have in the car. Uh, I turned it off though the other day and decided to just think and I was thinking about my economic situation now I really think of myself if you had to ask me what do I think of myself chiefly as I would say I think of myself as an artist I think of myself as an artist and a philosopher and a video blogger and a political activist those are the ways in which I think of myself but I think chiefly more than anything this is probably to me this is art and I think if we live in a kind of world where an artist can't live well and make money and devote her life or his life to making art and living a comfortable lifestyle, that to me saddens me. That to me is not the best of all possible worlds. And so I actually find that uh, in standing up for my opportunity, to make more money doing what I want to do these talking head vlogs and my website public comment blog that I'm also standing up for other people who have dreams that are outside the box or artistic I mean that's the other thing you know you can apply for all of these jobs and sometimes if you're this sort of outside the box kind of person and so they don't always resonate with you or even speak to what you feel are your skills. I was saying to somebody the other day, it's interesting that <laughs> you could be like a really good person and have a lot of thought on, thoughts on ethics and that in itself doesn't necessarily qualify you for a large number of jobs. Uh, even though in fact ethics is a really valuable topic to be knowledgeable of and equipped to talk about and um, move, the world, move the world forward in. One of the reasons I'm so attracted to politics is because I think that advancing policy is actually a way to make the world a more ethical place. So I, I think that's beautiful to, to watch politicians who really care about what they do because they appear to be people who are really motivated by ethics. And that's very inspiring to me. Uh, that's extraordinarily inspiring to me, in fact. It helps me, it makes me want to wake up in the morning when I watch people like um, Kirsten Gillibrand, who, you know, is really, appears to be troubled by the greed that corrupts capitalism and envisions a world where people can make profits without exploitation. That to me is, it's, it's, that's the kind of world I want to live in. And so I've got to stand up for that kind of world. Don't I? And I hope you would join me in doing so. Power. The relationship between money and power. Because many, many people, if you will tell them you will pay them a lot of money to do something, they will override what they thought were their ethical principles to do it, won't they? And it makes you think about things like um, prostitution or, I don't know, the pornography industry. I do, I'm sure that there are a number of people who actually just, that's 
their sexual style that that sort of exhibitionist voyeuristic realm uh, swinging realm of just sharing sex I'm sure is like very hot to them and that they should be allowed to enjoy that but you also have to wonder like what degree of people out there in the sex worker industry are doing it because they that's all their self-esteem permitted them in terms of conceptualizing how they could find value in themselves that's a sad thing to me and it doesn't have to be just through sex work that people prostitute themselves isn't that one of the values of that book catcher in the rye and the beginning of the novel where holden caulfield is uh expressing his disappointment in his older brother because he thinks of his bro older brother as someone who was his great writer who then prostituted himself by writing crappy movies in other words you know selling yourself short or selling your soul to the devil or you know not standing up for the product that you really want that you are devoted to making hmm. why am i so devoted to these talking head video blogs I mean, to me, it's just, I'm interested in the human soul. It's really that simple. I've got to plug in my laptop, though, because it's about to die. So, uh, forgive me for just a second here. But yeah, I mean, I find these things, and maybe it's just, Maybe it's my own cynicism. Inundated with ads all the times, I often feel like, oh, this person just wants my money. Oh, this person just wants my money. Oh, this person just wants my money. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe it also depends on how much you have. If you have a lot of money to spare, then maybe you feel better about all of the advertisements you're inundated with and you're like, Yes, I would like to buy that. Yes, I would like to buy that. Yes, I'd like to. I don't know. Uh, it would be interesting to see how I would change if suddenly I had a lot more money. I don't know. I did once have a lot of money. I once had over $100,000 to my name. Uh, but I refused to get a job. And I wasn't um, successful in selling the book that I had self-published at that time. And so I lost all that money pretty fast by uh, spending it and not saving anything. I don't want to be a screw up when it comes to money. I don't. It's interesting. Um, you know, I talk about how moving here to Basking Ridge for me is like a clean, it, trying to make a clean slate out of it. And I think about how, you know, it made me think of like the bad memories I had moving to Oceanside when I did have that sum of money and I did not try to find work and I did not do anything that was, um, at that point in time, I didn't even try to sell myself doing anything. I wrote stuff and I drank alcohol and that's about all I did. I didn't, um, I didn't say, hey, would you be willing to throw $5 at the cause of this website that I'm writing? You know, I didn't, I could have done something like that, but I didn't. Um, but I'm thinking about how I had this bad attitude towards things like my education, dropping out of college at the time, and how, you know, I've tried to make amends, I've tried to make amends and undo that wrong by getting the best GPA. Good, I got a 3.9 GPA. I got marked, I got one thing wrong on one damn test in my, uh, the American judicial system. He had said that he wanted X amount of citations and I didn't cite enough. So my grade got marked down uh, from an A to an A minus and that chipped away at what would have been a perfect 4.0 GPA. Uh, I'm not showing off, I'm not trying to talk about my grades or anything. My, what I'm trying to say is that in the face of having been an academic failure earlier in my life, I sought to do what I could to like try to atone for that in some way, shape, or form by devoting myself utterly to having the best grade I could possibly get to undo that wrong. So now I'm trying to undo the wrong of being an abject failure financially. 
part of that ha has to do with saving what I do have. And you know, try and it, so it's weird. This is all like a very weird scenario. I feel guilty every time I buy something because I don't have really so much money. And I get uncomfortable about how it influences my relationship with my wife. I don't like what money can do to a relationship. And I cherish the fact that it doesn't corrupt our relationship, but it doesn't change the fact that it's an insecurity I have all the time. Um, I think about the money that I'd like. What would I do with the money that I'd like? Interestingly, I don't feel a need to move from where we are. I mean, I've only been here like a week, so that could change. But I don't see a particular need to leave Basking Ridge. I think we might want to upgrade from a one bedroom condo eventually to a condo with more bedrooms and more space at some point. That would be nice with maybe a balcony of the with a view of the mountains that we see when we walk outside our condo today. That would be nice. Um, I would love to be able to buy more books and spend more time reading stuff. I'd like to spend the day, you know, thumbing through the news, reading the books that I appreciate, watching other people's vlogs, and being a more active uh, socializer on social media and the internet. I'd also like to be able to donate heavily to the political um, causes of my choice. Definitely. And I would like to, in general, eventually have the kind of money where I could be like a philanthropist and really donate to the causes that matter to me. Um, that'd be really cool. I, I mean, uh, this topic is just so hard for me to talk about because it's, emb it's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing to have to say I hate not having as much money as I have. For me, that's embarrassing. I know some people have no shame, whether they're rich or poor. Um, but I do feel ready to stand up for myself too. And doing so in a way that I don't want to be saying like, poor me though. But I got a 3.98 GPA and I sacrifice a lot of time and thought into like writing really good statements of purpose and a really good portfolio. And it would have been nice to have gotten rewarded for that financially because I spent like every second and brain cell I had on those efforts and they just didn't amount to anything which was upsetting. But see, that's the thing. I hate having that kind of conversation. I hate saying, oh, I worked so hard and I didn't get the financial reward I wanted. Because how many of us feel that way right now? I'm not alone there. I'm not alone in wishing I had more money. Isn't that like the nature of our economy right now? A lot of us feel underworked or rather underpaid and overworked. Yeah, it would be nice though to start getting rewarded for financially for these things that I do. It's weird wrapping my mind around these video blogs because I ask myself, I, I have these um, back and forth like, oh, who would want to sit for 40 minutes and listen to Sean O'Connor go on about himself and philosophy and whatever? And then I say to myself, well, you know what? I would watch it. I think, you know, I like my Proust and my Walt Whitman and my Dostoevsky and my Montaigne, and I like people who really share what's on their mind, and so I would like it. And so I think if I would like it, then somebody out there should like it too, or could like it too. And I think, and I think, um, it's 
think about the time investment. And you ask yourself sometimes, is it worth it? You know, you spend up to 40 minutes a day recording these videos that people may or may never, may watch or may never watch. And that was time that could have been spent doing something else of theoretically constructive value. And the effort that you put in, how does that get valued? And by who? And why? I guess I should stop it there for now. And I should say that um, if you found this to be a product, a thing that is of um, value, then I hope you would be so kind as to share it with those you think would pay it some mind as well. And I hope that you would also click the like and also leave a comment and uh, help me uh, contribute to this conversation or help me um, contrib contribute to this conversation, join me in this conversation. And I appreciate you having this conversation with me. Again, I think it's a really difficult conversation to have. I think resource is the driver of wars very much of the time. So I understand that this is like a unnerving conversation, at least for me and I'm sure for many other people. Thank you so much and I will chat with you again soon. Bye.